What is going on guys, your boy Trent back with their video and today we're going to talk about this weekend's matchup with the Ole Miss Rebels playing the Arkansas Razorbacks. Now this is a three game series, all three games will be there in Fayetteville, Arkansas this weekend. So let's talk about the Razorbacks first. Now Arkansas having a very good season, uh, 32 and 9 on the season, uh, top 5 in the country. I mean look, Arkansas it's pretty obvious, there's no doubt about it, Arkansas is having a good season. And, you know, both teams, Ole Miss and Arkansas, both of us usually up there toward the top. Both of us usually have good seasons. But for Ole Miss, we've been struggling since SEC play started versus Tennessee that first weekend. Ole Miss has been struggling big time, uh, not getting many wins. You know, the hitting not doing too good for us. The pitching not doing too good for us. And now it's just telling it how it is. Ole Miss has been struggling. So, but let's talk about the Arkansas Razorbacks first, and let's talk about their pitching rotation. So, this is the three starters this weekend, and this will be the pitchers Ole Miss is seeing this weekend. So, starting on the Friday night ace, the Friday night starter, Connor Nolan, 5-2 and two on the season, 2.54 ERA, 74 strikeouts on the season. Now, look, this guy, there's no doubt about it. This guy, he's a true ace, their best pitcher. The guy has some stuff, man. Nasty stuff. The guy has a fastball, has some very nice stuff as well. The guy can paint the corners. Look, just being honest with you, Friday night, he's going to give Ole Miss batters problems all night long. That's what I think is going to happen, just, just being honest with you. I mean, it doesn't matter, you know, who Arkansas plays or who Connor faces. The guy has been giving everybody problems all season long. So, now talking about this, the pitcher, uh, game two on Saturday, Hayden Smith. Now, I couldn't find his win and loss record, couldn't find his ERA, uh, but he is third on the team in strikeouts, so 53 strikeouts. And then the game three starter, which will be on Sunday, is Jackson Wiggins, 5-1 and one on the season. 5.55 ERA. And 57 strikeouts on the season, which is second on the team in strikeouts now. Now, for me as an Ole Miss fan, I do feel the most confident with us in game three. If Ole Miss is going to get a win this weekend, if Ole Miss is going to get hits, it will be game three. Now, look, I don't expect Ole Miss to get many hits, many runs off of Connor and, and Hagen this weekend. Uh, but there is a game Ole Miss can get the bats going. It will be versus Jackson this weekend in Game 3. But look, all three pitchers are all good pitchers. I'm not saying this is the best pitcher we faced all year. I mean, if you would pick a team, it would be Tennessee. Now, Tennessee starting pitcher rotation is ridiculous. But Arkansas, not the best, but they're still up there pretty high on the list. Um, look, now, Game 1 and also Game 3, both guys right-handed pitchers. Game 2 uh, with Hayden. He's going to be a left-handed pitcher. So Ole Miss will be seeing two right-handed pitchers starting out the games. And then Ole Miss will see one left-handed pitcher this weekend as well. And that's really the same thing for Ole Miss. Uh, we'll talk about that here in a second. So now Ole Miss has two right-handed pitchers, one left. And actually Ole Miss is using their left-handed pitcher game two as well. So we'll talk about that here in a second. But now talking about Arkansas's best hitters. Now... You know, Arkansas has some good hitters. They have many guys you can rely on for Ole Miss. It's been kind of the opposite, just being honest with you. So, uh, not going to name all their players off, but they have many guys who can hit the ball. Uh, you know, some guys with over five, six home runs. You know, a couple guys batting over 300. And I actually found this pretty interesting. Uh, actually, both of our batting averages are pretty close. Uh, Arkansas is ninth in the SEC in batting average with a 281 average, and then Ole Miss is 11th in the SEC with a batting average of 278. So, actually, Ole Miss is just right there below Arkansas, uh, just three points of a difference, not too, not too much at all. So, but uh, talking about Arkansas's best hitters, guys, to watch out for this weekend, and uh, I'll tell you what, let's start behind the plate. Michael Turner hitting 329, five home runs, 33 RBIs. A guy you have to watch out for this weekend. Uh, then we'll talk about the shortstop, third baseman, 
Uh, now, the shortstop is Jalen Battles, hitting 296, seven home runs, 26 RBIs. Uh, third baseman, Caden Wallace, hitting 305, six home runs, 36 RBIs. And then I would probably go with the center fielder and the right fielder. Uh, center fielder, uh, Braden Webb. Now, when you look at his batting percentage, it's 254, which is not a good batting percentage. But if there is anybody who, you know, can get a home run, or the best home run so far this year it has been Braden Webb. Uh, Webb leads the team in home runs with nine, nine home runs on the season, 24 RBIs. And then the right fielder, uh, Chris Wazanzu, uh, hitting 314, five home runs, 20 RBIs. So now with Arkansas, they have, you know, four or five guys with over five home runs. They have some power. They have some guys that can hit the ball. Um, so with Ole Miss, the pitchers, we need the pitchers this weekend. We need the guys to step it up, do their job. Uh, now, so far this year, none of them have really done their job. But but for Ole Miss, you know, the bounce back, have a good weekend, and still have a chance at making the tournament. Ole Miss needs some wins this weekend. But uh, we'll talk about that here in a second as well. So now, uh, for the Arkansas fans watching this video, this is what you need about Ole Miss now. Starting on Friday, Ole Miss is uh, you, Ole Miss is using a uh, right-handed pitcher, Dylan DeWucci. Now, I couldn't find his stats on him, but DeWucci has started for us a couple games. Now, last weekend, very, very impressive versus State. Uh, last weekend, pitched all of nine innings. Uh, I think he ended up having six or seven strikeouts. And um, I think he ended up pitching 117 pitchers, I believe is how much it was. Uh, but this, you know, last week, that was his, I think, third start ever. So he started against Kentucky. Yeah, started against Kentucky, started against South Carolina. And then last week, by far, his best performance yet. So Ole Miss, we have had some problems at pitching all year. Uh, hopefully Ole Miss has found something with DeLucci. And who knows, he could turn into a Friday night ace. That's what it's kind of looking like um, so far. Or that's what Ole Miss is hoping for, but... But the Lucci, uh, there's no doubt about it, definitely one of our best pitchers for sure. So, but for Ole Miss to have a chance, we need the Lucci to step it up again. We need a guy to, you know, not give up hits, not give up home runs, and the guy who just keeps on getting the outs and keep on getting strikeouts. So that's what Ole Miss needs this weekend. So, so yeah, if the Lucci does the same thing like he did last weekend, through all nine innings, complete game. Um, I think he only gave up like five hits all night. If the Woodsy can do his job again, hey, Ole Miss has a chance. Game one against Arkansas. Now, game two, uh, Ole Miss is using left-handed pitcher Hunter Elliott. Now, Elliott, true freshman, uh, has started a couple games for Ole Miss this year. And look, Elliott, to me, this is my opinion. Uh, I, I love Hunter Elliott. I think his guy has tons of potential. And I would not be surprised, you know, here next year or maybe in two years, uh, I really believe Hunter Elliott should be our best pitcher on our team. I love the kid. I love his stuff. The kid, you know, still pretty young, true freshman, but the kid has some pretty good stuff. So now when you look at his record, win, you know, win-loss record, it's not not where you want to be at. But uh, He's still a pretty good pitcher overall. So, actually, he leads the team in strikeouts, 45 strikeouts. Uh, ERA right there around 3-ish, 4-ish. Uh, couldn't find his ERA, but I know it's right there around 3 or 4. So, uh, but I think I think Ole Miss maybe has a chance game 2 as well. Um, I just kind of hope Hunter Elliott does his job. So, now game 3, Ole Miss using right-handed pitcher Derek Diamond. So, I kind of mentioned Arkansas starter for Game 3 earlier and Ole Miss Game 3 starter kind of the same way. Now, look, Sunday, you're going to see both teams get hits. Uh, you're going to see a bunch of hits, a bunch of runs. Uh, Sunday, you will see some home runs. Both teams will have home runs. Uh, but Derek Diamond, right-handed pitcher, 3-3 uh, three and three on the season, which is not good. Uh, three wins, three losses. ERA is 6.25. Uh, but he's tied for second on the team with 41 strikeouts. So, so look, game three, there's going to be tons of offense. I can just about promise you and guarantee it. With Diamond pitching for us, 
And then Arkansas, uh, I forgot who's pitching for them Sunday, but both guys are going to give up hits. They're going to give up runs. Uh, actually, last weekend, Arkansas played A&M, and A&M won 11-10. So even last week, pretty high-scoring game. So uh, I would not be surprised if you kind of see the same thing again, game three. Uh, I think both teams could easily have seven, eight runs, game three, if not 10 or 11 runs. But uh, game three is going to be pretty interesting. I think it just kind of comes down to, hey, you know, what team can get the most hits and most runs? And actually, I think last year, I think it was kind of the same thing. If I, you know, if I remember correctly, I think it was game three. Um, was one of those crazy games, you know, kind of back and forth. I think the final, it was like 19 to 14 or something, 1917, if I remember correctly. Uh, that game three for us last year, super crazy game. Uh, you know, Ole Miss was up some, Arkansas was up some, uh, but there toward the end, Arkansas came back and we just couldn't, you know, we just couldn't come back. But, but Sunday you will see some, some home runs and some hits for sure, bunch of offense. So, but yeah, talking about for Ole Miss now, we've been struggling, man, on offense as well, but for Ole Miss, there's Two guys you kind of feel like you can trust and you can rely on. Um, so if there is anybody who's going to give Ole Miss a chance this weekend, any guy who you feel like can get some hits, get some runs, some home runs this weekend, it is these two guys for sure. So starting with the first baseman, Tim Elko, uh, fifth-year senior. Now, Elko hitting 306 on the season, but has 16 home runs, 51 RBIs. Now, look, Elko... Very good hitter, very good fastball hitter. Now, I will be honest with you, if you throw Elko a breaking ball, he's going to swing and miss. But throw my fastball down the middle, the guy will crush out of the ballpark. Um, the guy has tons of power. Look, Elko, look, Elko can hit 400 feet. He can hit 425. The guy has tons of power. Uh, very, very strong. But I'm telling you, Ole Miss, really not just Elko in particular, but Ole Miss, we have been struggling hitting anything except a fastball this year. Um, I mean, it's kind of obvious. Watch us on TV. Watch us in person. Throw us a fastball. Yeah, we can hit it. Throw us a breaking ball. Swing and miss every time. But uh, also, uh, the shortstop, Jacob Gonzalez. Now, Gonzalez, not too far behind Elko. Uh, Gonzalez hitting 295 on the season. 14 home runs, 37 RBIs. Now, there's a good chance that uh, Gonzalez could be one of the first few picks taken in next year's draft. But the kid's still pretty young, has tons of talent. But um, but for Ole Miss to have a chance this weekend, it's those two guys right there, Gonzalez and Elko. Now, last weekend, uh, we had Gonzalez at number two in the spot, batting off, and then we had Elko at three. So, so yeah, there's a good chance you may have them two back and you know back to back again in the lineup. And hey, if they are back to back, uh, there's a good chance at least one of them will get a hit and at least one of them will get on base. So, but that is the two guys Arkansas has to watch out for this weekend is Gonzalez and Elko. Now the rest of the lineup been kind of struggling. The rest of the lineup not really getting too many hits. Uh, if I was to probably guess, I'd probably say Justin Bench, the uh, third baseman, probably the third best hitter, uh, hitting 298, two home runs, 27 RBIs, and you could probably say Kevin Graham up there in the conversation as well. Uh, Graham, the left fielder, hitting 278, six home runs, 26 RBIs. But uh, the best two hitters for Ole Miss this year, no doubt about it, has been Elko and Gonzalez. So uh, predictions and thoughts this weekend. I do have Arkansas winning the series this weekend. And I would game one uh, with Nolan on the mound. I mean, I, I really do believe Nolan's just pretty much going to shut us down. I think game one should be a pretty easy win for Arkansas. Game two, you'd have two left-handed pitchers going up against each other. Uh, but I'm going to Arkansas on that one as well. And then game three. Game three, I think, will be a very, very close one. Uh, very, very close one. I would not be surprised if it goes in extra innings. Um, but I'm going with Ole Miss, game three. Uh, but at the same time, I would not be surprised if Arkansas sweeps. But uh, if Ole Miss can get one win this weekend, it will be game three Sunday. So 
that's just kind of my thoughts and opinions uh whether he all thoughts and opinions as well but that's pretty much all i got for the video so thanks for watching please like comment subscribe if you haven't already thanks for watching and i'll see you guys next video have a good one turn out peace